Neil from Essex here to share something significant that has happened in the Kubota world here recently. For years, this company has used a simple five digit serial number for all of their equipment. And that has been highly problematic for us. Even within a product family, that five digit serial number can duplicate across equipment. You need a combination of both the full model code and the five digit serial number to uniquely identify a machine. And so there are cases where we would punch in a serial number for a BX series tractor into our computer and come up with two different machines that have shared that same serial number. It was quite annoying. Recently here though, Kubota has switched to a full 17 digit serial number and those digits mean things. So today we're gonna talk through the new serial number structure Maybe that number that's on the side of your equipment is gonna tell you something about your machine that you didn't know. Messix, a helping hand with your land. Now, if you've never gone looking for your serial number before, it's located on the front right-hand corner of your tractor, potentially in two different places. There is a sticker here that's printed on the front of the machine that has the serial number burned into it, but if that sticker seems to come off of your machine, as stickers often do, you'll find the number also stamped into the frame of the tractor. And again, we're looking on most machines towards the front right-hand side of the unit. Now explaining what these 17 digits mean is complicated. <laughs> Several pages of paper here. Uh, but there is some consistency across all of the models. So we're gonna work through the parts of the serial number here that are consistent globally across all equipment and then talk about some of the specifics of particular models. The first three digits are gonna be an indicator for kind of the, the company's business unit or engineering group, if you will. Um, it's not a direct indicator of the factory, but it does kind of start to look that way when you dive into it. There's only a handful of valid values here, and those are A5K, KBC, KBG, KBT, KBU, or in the case of some hay tools, I saw some ZPM and UKG. And again, that refers to the business unit, the engineering department that's going through and manufacturing that piece of equipment. Searching through our system, I didn't find equipment that has every one of those variations on it, but there's definitely a lot of KBG here from the turf side and a lot of KBU that you're gonna find on the tractors. The fourth digit here is gonna tell you what portion of the product line that piece of equipment is coming from. Now in a compact tractor that's gonna go through and you're gonna have individual digits here that are gonna indicate that this is say maybe a B series tractor or an M or an L series tractor. It is not literally BLM like you find on the side of the hood. These are probably more internal representations of exactly where in the product family this machine lies. So those first four digits there kind of telling us called almost the project identifier of that machine within Kubota. We're gonna jump down to some other digits here that are consistent across all models, right? So the 10th, 11th, and 12th digit. The 10th digit and the 12th digit tell us when that machine was manufactured, both the year and the month. And we'll put up on the screen here exactly how to decode exactly what those digits mean. This is an interesting number to us because this isn't something that we could ever identify before. Tractors are not sold in model years. The year of your equipment is considered the year that you bought it. On our end, there was actually never a way that we could tell you when a piece of equipment was manufactured. So now with the 17 digit serial number, we can actually do that. You can pick out the month and the year that the machine was produced out of that serial number. And again, if you're selling your tractor, you're looking for something on the secondary market, we don't use those numbers as the year of the machine. The year is the sale, original sale date of the unit. Sitting there in the 11th digit, for some reason smack in the middle of the time that the machine was produced, is the factory that it was produced in. And you've got an identifier in there that tells you what plant produced the machine. Now we're gonna jump backwards here, back to digits five, six, seven, and eight. Those are referred to as a machine descriptor, and what they mean is gonna vary depending on exactly what product you're looking at. If we're looking at compact tractors, say a majority of what Kubota is known for, in digit number five, you're gonna have a series indicator, and that's gonna show you 
iterations of a machine over time. Oftentimes in the full model number, you'll see a dash one, dash two, dash three as small changes are made during a machine's production run. That can now be identified here in the serial number as well in the fifth digit. The sixth digit is gonna be an indicator about some kind of reference to the machine's horsepower. I don't know exactly how those are gonna decode. I couldn't figure out by looking at the stuff that I had in stock, but that's what it says here in my paperwork. Number seven is gonna tell you something about the type of transmission that's in that machine. And number eight is gonna be a reference to whether it's a ROPS or a CAB. As you move across the rest of the product line, you have very similar things happen in other product series. So referring to the model number, the amount of horsepower that the machine has in somewhere or another in digits five, six, seven, and eight. Digit number nine is what's referred to as a checksum. Uh, in the computer world, if you go through and do mathematical calculations on the rest of these digits, you're gonna have a resulting answer that is stored in digit number nine. And by running an algorithm on this serial number and comparing against that checksum digit in number nine, you're able to mathematically say whether there's been an error in one of these other digits. So nine, digit nine doesn't mean anything to us, but it gives a way to verify that the serial number that we're looking at is correct. And finally, the end of the serial number, digits 13 through 17, the five digits there at the end, are our same old five digit serial number that we have been used to using for decades. Um, that number there at the end is a sequential number. Every machine that rolls off a production line, that number just increments up one at a time for every machine that rolls off. One thing that's a little interesting is you can look at those numbers and get some kind of idea on how big the machine population is or where exactly your machine was in the production run. Um, when I looked at two of the machines I had here on our lot, one of our RTV X1100s has a serial number up in the 75,000 drawers range, kind of referring to just how many RTV 1100s have been sold. On the converse side of that, I have a used uh, round baler in stock right now, a BB4180 with a serial number down at 169, meaning it would have been one of the first ones produced. So if you're looking for kind of like one of those late model type machines and you don't want to wait for one where the factory has kind of gotten up to speed and gotten used to what they're producing, you're going to want to look for higher serial numbers rather than lower ones. So what can we learn about this tractor right here by looking at the serial number? We're gonna start here at the beginning with KBU. That's gonna tell us that this is out of the tractor, compact tractor engineering department. Uh, the first digit here is gonna be a C that tells us that this is a BX series tractor. The next identifier is gonna be the series and this is a number one. So this is the first iteration of this tractor. The D is gonna tell us that uh, it's uh, a reference to the horsepower, and my hunch is that that D is a reference to the number of cylinders because in German, which is what they use to refer to their engine model codes, it's a three-cylinder engine. Uh, the H here is gonna tell us that it has a hydrostatic transmission. The R is that it's a ROPS machine and not a cab. The K is our checksum number. And now here's where we get interesting. So the manufacturing year here is N, which tells us that this machine was produced in 2002, or 2022, even though it just arrived here. And the month of that would have been M, which was in December. So we're sitting here uh, January right now, so it would have been produced about six weeks ago, which is interesting. And if we look at the factory that this came out of, this would be out of the N factory? D-E-F-G-H-I-J-K-N. Uh, there's a range here for what is KMA. So G through H tells us that this is KMA, which could have told you off the top of my head. And then the last five digits here at the end is our iterative serial number, just that increment that happens of 84,131. There's a lot of BX23s out there. So maybe that tells you something about your piece of equipment that you didn't know already. Uh, this system has been in place now for probably about a year. Looking around our parking lot, most of the equipment that's out here today does use this newer standard. Although you do see the old five digit number floating around in a lot of places too. That's often probably going to be our go-to number here for a while. If you're shopping for a piece of equipment and we can help or you got parts or service needs for a machine you've already got, give us a call here at Messix. This is what we do. We're available at 800-222-3373 or check out our website at messix.com.
Now, if you've not looked for your serial number before, it's gonna be located on the fright. The fright, the fright, what's the fright? Okay. Now, if you've 